Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our J11 and we're looking at BVR long range missiles. So this video will cover the J11A, the SU-27, the SU-33 and the three MiG-29 variants. Although they're not identical, they're similar enough that we can do it in just one aircraft and we will not lose any major functionality along the, along the way. There are essentially two modes of combat, BVR or beyond visual range, so that's beyond 10 miles from us, or within visual range combat which is within 10 miles so today we're looking at bvr outside of 10 miles now for this video i'm going to assume that you've already seen my video in this playlist of the hud and the hud symbology and i'm also going to assume that you've seen the video on radar and the irst sensor on this aircraft so before we start shooting things let's go and have a look at our armament screen and look at the missiles we can use so if we look at our, at our most dynamic pylon which is pylons eight and three Air to air, we get whoops, we get an R twenty seven ER, an R twenty seven ET, an R twenty seven R, a T, a seventy uh, sorry, a seventy seven. The seventy three is a close range missile, so we will not go through that. So the first missile we'll look at is the R twenty seven R. This is a radar guided variant of the R twenty seven missile. It is a semi active radar homing missile. It is guided from firing all the way to the target by our radar on our mothership aircraft. Its range completely depends on its application, our altitude, our speed, our aspect, and as well the same things with the enemy. Roughly speaking, at optimal firing, then it's going to be about 20 miles on a hot aspect target and all the way down to about 4 miles on a cold aspect target. The R27ER is exactly the same, but the E just means it's extended range and it gives it an extra couple of miles of range. Then we have the R-27T. This is not radar-guided missile. This is an IR-guided missile. This has an IR sensor in its nose. It is a passive sensor, so it does not emit any kind of radiation. It is guided initially by the IRST sensor on the front of the aircraft here until it's fired, and then it tracks on its own sensor. And the ET is the extended range version of that. Then we have the R-77. This is what's called a FOX-3 type missile, a fully active radar homing missile. This means it has its own radar on board the missile. When we fire it, it will initially use the radar of the aircraft, then it will turn on its own radar and become completely independent. So we'll arm up with a mix of those and then get in the air. We're airborne now. Now before we get into combat, we'll look at the controls that we're going to be using and there will be quite a lot of them, so let's have a look. So to fire the missile, we have weapon fire. To lock or unlock a target, target lock. To change to our BVR mode, we've got two. To slew our TDC, target designator controller, we cursor, we've got we've got target designator up, down, left, and right. To turn our radar on, we've got I. To turn our IRST electrical optical on, we've got O. To change from TWS to RWS and vice versa lock, we have U. To slew our radar and turn it up, we have that, down, that. We can slew it left, there, and right, there. To zoom out our radar screen, we have that. To zoom in, we have that. To cycle our PRF, our pulse repetition frequency modes, we have this. Okay, we're in the cockpit now. We know there's a hostile off our nose about 20 miles that we're going to shoot at. First thing we're going to do is unpause and press 2 to get to BBR mode. Next, we're going to turn our radar on with the I key. So there are, we're going to split this into two. We're first going to do a run showing using our radar. Then we're going to do another run showing using our IRST or our electrogo, electrical optical sensor. First, just to show a couple of commands that I missed out by accident. Weapon change we'll need. Also, we'll need our display zoom out and display zoom in. So we can show cycling through our weapons. Our currently selected weapon is down here at the bottom right, the R77. We can change to the 27ER. 27ET and back again and we've got here our ordnance panel we can see which pylons we've got selected and ready to fire. Next on our radar screen we won't go into too much depth here because we have a full video about the, using the radar but just to show we have a hostile there is hidden slightly behind this, behind this vertical line. His range according to our range bar here which is 50 kilometers there, zero kilometers there, it was about 32 kilometers or so and azimuth directly on our nose, our 12 o'clock. He is a single line. Let me just move away from him slightly. He's a single row of lines, two lines. That's showing that he is, first of all, it's showing us that he's a hostile because our radar can distinguish between friends and foe. So it's showing it's a foe, it's a hostile. We know that because it's only one 
row of dots. If it had another row of dots below it, it would be a friend. Also, we can tell the rough size of the aircraft. He's two dots, so it means he's two dots aircraft, which is a medium-sized aircraft. If it was one dot, it would be a very small aircraft or a missile. And if it was up at three or four dots, it would be a very large aircraft. Now, as it happens, he's directly in front of us, and we can see him with our radar set up on its default setting. But if he wasn't, if, for instance, he was up high, down low, skewed off to the side, then we would need to slew our radar dish in the front of our aircraft around and just just so that we can do that we can change our scan zone or our radar elevation up and down let me unpause that and show you that happening we can see that happening on the right the radar elevation bar that's having up high that's having it down low and you can see when i do that the contact radar contact disappears because the radar is aiming either too low or too high at the time let me put it back to neutral and the contact will appear again there he is and the next thing is that we can slew it left and right as well. Scan zone left or right. It's currently in the middle. If I slewed it left, you can see it to the left, right to the right. And he disappears again. Bring it back. And he's back. I've just accidentally zoomed out to five uh, kilometers there. So, so I zoomed in. So let me just zoom back out again. There we go. Uh, and that's another thing in fact we can change the distance the rate the range of our scan of our sorry the range of the display of our radar um up and down as uh, you saw just doing there i'll put it back to 50 kilometers for now in case i didn't say earlier we know we've got a radar on because we've got the ill marker here we again we can see the aircraft perfectly fine as we are but if we couldn't if the aircraft was at a strange aspect for instance was heading away from us and at a certain range we may need to change our prf our pulse repetition frequency this is shown by this symbol here it's commonly on interleave but we could change that with the button that we showed earlier so let's do that we could have high we could have medium or interleave interleave just means that it interleaves between high and medium for us these pulse repetition frequencies high and medium optimize our radar search for a contact depending on its aspect its aspect is currently hot and we can see it perfectly well if it was running away from us and we couldn't see it very well because that's just how radars work we may need to change our prf to optimize our search to be able to find him okay so next we're going to lock him up so i'm going to unpause i can move my target designated control around with the tdc keys as we saw in the key setup i can move it over the hostile here and press the target lock and we now have him locked just to quickly blast over the symbology first of all we have the target highlighted by this circle here we have the target's range on our range scale which is now zoomed back down to 25 kilometers accordingly because he is now less than 25 kilometers so we can see his range is about 23 kilometers that is the hostile's true speed that is the hostile's altitude in meters asl here are three range markers for the particular weapon we have selected our max our lethal our min our maximum is the maximum range we can fire at so that we would hit him if he carried on flying directly into the missile. Here is the our lethal, the range at which we could fire and even if he dodged we would have a good chance of killing him. And this is our min. All missiles have a minimum range because they need time to fuse and whatnot. So we will not get permission to, get permission to fire and we will not be able to fire until we get this arrow lower than our max here now i can show you that our different weapons have different profiles regarding these markers here so if i change to a different weapon now you see the et has that range slightly less and the r77 had that range even less next we can show that we have our radar antenna dot here so we've locked onto the target we know no longer have control of the radar elevation or the radar azimuth left or right but it this this little dot here tells us the current elevation and azimuth of our radar you can see it's centered in the middle of this cross here that's just to let us know that the radar is in a very neutral position at the moment no azimuth left or right hardly any elevation up or down so there's little left to do now apart from shoot the target so we've got a radar lock which means we can use our 27 er or our r77 but we could not use our 27 et because that is an ir censored weapon not driven by radar now, if we use the 27ER, we would have to maintain target lock until the missile hit, because the missile does not have its own on-board radar. If we use the R77, we could turn away about halfway through the missile's travel. We could turn away and lose lock, and the missile would still hit because it would have its own on-board radar, which, would, which it would switch on and guide the rest of the way. A couple of other things to point out. We have our IFF shown here. When we have the target unlocked, we could tell by the amount of rows, if you remember, the target's coalition we now tell by this symbol here if it's an a it's a hostile if it's an af 
R, then it means it's friendly. Also, we can see that we are on target lock or track mode now, and we are no longer in scan mode. It was SCN before we had locked. Just one thing to note, this IFF only works if we have our radar on, our ILL symbol here. It will not work when we use our EO later on. Okay, so that's some pause. Let's aim at the target. And as soon as the arrow on the left gets within our max, we will take the shot. We will press and hold weapon fire. And we'll use the 27ER just because we can. You can see that we can fire now. We've got that LA. We're within, we're within our max. We've got the LA. That's launch authority. We can fire the weapon. So let's do that now. Off he goes. And we should see that we've only got one green dot down here left. So only one missile of that type left. You can see how the missile tracks and leads him as he tries to dodge. You can see the target's aspect changing with this arrow here. You can see now we've got closer. We're within our lethal now. And why don't we launch an R-77 at him now just to make sure. And we can add a little bit of lead as well over, over this way. That's our R-77 out. He's going to fly straight into it. Or is he? Wow, he's done amazingly well. Oh, no, we've got him. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. Very good. So that was just showing the symbology, how, how to lock a target, showing the symbology involved, when to fire, and how to select the weapon. Next, we're going to go back. We're going to do the same. But instead of using our radar, we're going to use our IS, IRST or our EO. So we're back now. Let's unpause. BVR mode on. Electrico optical on. It's similar symbology. We have no ILL at the bottom here. So the radar is off, but we have an EO here. So the IRST electrical optical is on. So symbology wise, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. It's telling us that it's in scan mode at the moment. As well as that, we can, uh, we do still have our scan elevation and azimuth lines. And if you look, we can move them up and down, left and right again. But with the EO, I don't think it's actually slewable. Whereas the radar, we could actually move it left, move it right, move it up and move it down. The IRST, I believe, is always in a fixed position. And these functions actually have no function at the moment as well as that this is no longer a range bar with the EO with the EO so this up and down graphic rather than being the range of the target is now essentially the pitch of the target from us so if the target was well essentially say somewhere in that cloud then it would literally appear the target when we see it it would appear roughly in that cloud there if the target was down low it would appear down low here so it's not showing the range and the azimuth is still the azimuth if it's over to the left here the target is to the left if it's to the right, then the target's to the right. Now, very roughly speaking, the range of the radar that we used before was about 50 or 60 miles, something like that. The range of this EO is a lot less. The range will depend on the heat signature of the aircraft. It just so happens the heat signature of the aircraft we're looking for now is very low. And so the range we'll be able to get this guy in is probably not much more than 10 miles. So we'll have to get very close before he'll come visible. The benefit of this EO system is that it's passive only. It does not emit any radiation so if you like it's a stealth mode of finding targets so now i'm going to fly towards the target's known position and at some point when he's close enough we'll pick his heat signature up here right we've got a signal up here it's right in the middle here now it's four dots that is not showing the size of the aircraft with eo we cannot tell the size of the aircraft all contacts will show up as four dots. Now we can see it's basically in front of us. That's because this is centered in the middle of our HUD. If I were to move left a little, you can see that it'll start to track to the right. So bearing in mind that we are facing there, it's telling us that our hostile is to the up and to the right. And you probably won't be able to see this on your screen, but the actual target is there. So it doesn't hover over the actual target. Instead, it's a proportion of the total scan zone of this IRST. The IRST is going to scan out, I think, about 60 degrees, something like that, in either direction. So the edge of the HUD here would represent about 60 degrees if this marker here were on the edge of the HUD. But because it's very near to the center of the HUD, it's showing that the deviation of the aircraft from the center of the HUD is actually only about 10 degrees. And that's about what that target is there, what I'm scanning between there. At this point, we can tell nothing else about the aircraft. We can't tell its size, its azimuth or anything, or even its range. So that's just how EO works. The next thing we're gonna do is lock him up. So we're gonna move our TDC over 
him, like so. Press target lock, and we've now got a lock on him. Now, there is a lot of information we can get. Our radar is still off, but the EO can still get a lot of information. We can tell that he's traveling at 700 kilometers an hour true. That's his altitude. Uh, we've now got his range. That is, we've got quite close without knowing. We uh, it's Just because he was heading towards us, I didn't lock him in time. So that is 10 kilometers there. R max, the marker is going to be way up there in this case, equivalent. This is the R lethal marker, so we're within R lethal now, and that is R minimum there. Beware here, it's showing him as a, a hostile, as A, with the IFF marker here. Remember that this does not work until I turn, unless I turn my radar on, so don't be fooled, it's a common mistake to make. Now, because I've got an IR lock on this guy, I cannot fire a radi radiation-based missile. I can only fire an IR-based missile, which is my R27 ET, so I need to select that and fire it. So we'll change weapon, we'll have to do it quite quick, I've just noticed how close he is. So weapon change. There we go. And I will go ahead and fire at him uh, based on the symbology we saw last time. So why in that case, if I change my weapon quickly, do I have launch authority with an R-77, a radar guided missile? Well, we can actually fire a radar guided missile from an EO lock. The reason is that I can press the trigger now with the R-77 selected and as I press the trigger it will automatically turn the radar on. That radar would automatically gain a radar lock based on the information gathered by the EO and that will allow me to fire a radar guided missile. So I'm going to try, why not, let's try firing a radar guided missile at him. Pow. And we got him. Now I know this is a BVR video, a long range video, and we shot him at close range, but we shot him with the BVR functionality. The only reason he got so close is because we didn't pick him up in time with the uh, REO sensor. It has a much longer range if the hostile is a cold aspect, which means if he was heading away from us and we could see the back of his engines, then we would see him much earlier. So that leads me on to the penultimate thing I want to mention, and that is I can have the radar on at the same time as the EO. So you'll notice we've got EO on up here and we've got a radar on now. So that is a thing. When that happens, the radar will be the primary sensor, but we have the functionality for both. So I think the only other thing I wanted to mention, I know I showed this in the radio video, uh, in the radar video, but we also have a top-down view of the radar here. So we can see we're there. This is going to be very small now and I haven't got time to scan in. And there is actually a hostile, he's heading is this line here, he's a hostile, he's only a mile away from us now. But this shows our radar, currently selected radar scan zone, our current legend or the scale of this display, and our current true speed. And in fact, there's just one more thing that I wanted to say, and that is about targets that are jamming. So let me just set up again quickly. Okay, so I've reset the scenario, I've got my radar on, I'm searching in BVR mode with my radar on, and my EO off. I've got my target here. Now there's just one thing that you might find when you go into combat. So what you might find in reality when searching for a target is not a lovely clear, clear pair of dots like this. You might see a whole stack of fuzzy lines. If you see that, then you'll know what it is, is that the target is jamming. It has an ECM pod or an inbuilt ECM, electronic countermeasures, and it's jamming your radar. If the target was jamming like that, then you'd only be able to get the very basic information on him, basically his azimuth, which direction it is. You couldn't tell how far away he is, like we can here, and we wouldn't be able to get a lock on him, and we wouldn't be able to fire at him. Now, the good thing is, though, that when you get close enough to a target that's jamming, you will burn through his jammer, and his jammer will become ineffective, and then his symbology will return to normal like this. So if you see a target that's jamming, if you get close enough, usually within about 20 miles, the stack of lines will disappear, and you're just pre presented with normal graphic like this, and you will then be able to ascertain his range, and lock him, and fire at him like normal. Other than that, that's all I want to say on BVR, using radar and electro-optical. I hope that helps, and see you later.